Okay, it's Mr. Rops here. Today we're going to talk about random variables and what and what they are, and give you some examples of what those scenarios could be. So, well, imagine I have a deck of playing cards. Okay, and if I asked you to cons consider, just do a mind experiment, what's the probability, or could you tell me? If you were to choose one card at random, what would the probability of choosing an ace? Well, in your head, you can probably picture this, all these, oh, all these different combinations of the cards. These are what all exist, even if you don't know playing cards. And here are all the aces. And so you can picture what it's going to be, and you could assign a probability would be 4 to 52, but before you, so you can actually know the probability of it happening by experiment or by theory, but you, when you are going to draw the card, you don't actually know what's going to happen. So you know what could happen, but each time you do the event, something, the outcome, you don't know what's going to be, but you could assign a probability to that outcome. And that's a discrete one because we can count all these different probabilities that we could do it. And there's actual numbers to it. Well, consider this example. i got a clock. And if I know that I arrive home between 5 and 6 o'clock each night, well, what would be the probability that I arrive between 5, oh, five and 5.05? Well, that's a range kind of thing. And I can picture all my probabilities and I have a range there and I know this is one out of a possible 12 and so this here if I'm going to do my time of arrival of home that would be a continuous type time because maybe it's 505.01111 seconds like this is a, a scale that keeps on going and so it's going to be over a continuous cycle but again we could determine what those probabilities are and each time I arrive home I don't know what time it'll be but I can as assume every, not assume but I can assign every probability or every time a probability similarly here I have a pot of coffee or a cup of coffee that comes if I want to know the temperature five minutes after my cup of coffee arrives well again I know in my head what the possible temperatures could be, like maybe 50 degrees Celsius, right? Or maybe it's 35 degrees Celsius. This would be the outcome of my random variable, what's the temperature? And the actual probabilities done by experiment, you could assign different probabilities to these various temperatures. And so that's an example of a continuous random variable. So, so random variables are defined as variables whose values cannot be predicted in advance, but are determined by the outcome of an experiment or theory. Okay, so we know what they're going to be, but we do not, we cannot predict them. It is possible to assign probabilities to each value taken from a random variable. So we can, we can probably guess how much was the temperature is going to be on a probability scale, but we never actually know what the temperature of the coffee would be. Um, and so we have two different kinds of random variables. One is called a discrete random variable, and these are when I can actually count them. And the cards example is an example of a discrete random variable. And I can also have a continuous random variable, and that involves measurement of some time. So the clock example or the coffee example are examples of a continuous random variable. Here are some different scenarios. So think about this. Determine which are continuous random variables and discrete random variables. So I want you to read this and then determine for yourself what you think it is. If you said discrete, you are correct because you're going to count the number of posts. Look at the next one. Read that one. Make a guess what it's going to be. The number of customers, again, that is going to be a discrete random variable because we're going to count them. There are specific values of these. Next one, read that one. And that's going to be a continuous because it's a measurement. And 
Now this one, number of bed, beds available, large, city, and given night. That one's going to be discrete, though it would be quite a lot of beds, but each one could be assigned a probability. And finally, the weight of newborn babies in a hospital, well, that has a continuous scale to it. So these are some examples of random variables where we know what the possibilities are for the outcomes, and we can, but we don't know what the outcome will be on any given experiment, but we can assign a probability to it. So here's an example using some discrete random variables. So the magazine store records the number of magazines purchased by its customers in one day. 28% do one magazine, two magazines are purchased by 38, 21 by three, and K by four or more magazines. Find K. Well, what do I know about probabilities? I know that this, these are all my possibilities that I could do. I know it's people who have purchased them, and so it's 28%, that's for one, plus 0 0.38, Two plus 0 0.21 for 3 plus k. All these probabilities have to add up to 1 because these are the only possibilities. And so when I do the mathematics on the arithmetic, I get k to be 0 0.31. That's for 4 or more magazines. So that's simple enough. Create a probability distribution table. Well, to do that, I'm going to introduce x as my random variable of the number of magazines purchased okay and so I'm going to say X capital X these are capital X's belong to one to equal little x well I know it could be one two three or more than or equal to four and the probability that X equals the random variable X equals the specific values of one is 0 0.28 0 0.38 0 0.021 and 0 0.13. This here is called a probability distribution table. So this is the distribution for this particular random variable. Okay, look at another one. Find the probability distribution function. Or given this probability distribution function for these values, find k. Well, I know that x can be any of these values. So when I find the probability when x is equal to 1, then I get k, 1 plus 2, which is 3k. When the probability that x is equal to 2, well, I get k, 2 plus 2 is 4, well, that's 4k. The probability that x is 3 is k, well, 3 is times 5 is 5k. And so these are the only possibilities that exist. And so what I can say then, I know that 3k plus 4k plus 5k has to be 1. And so if I do some algebra run here, I get k is equal to 1 12. And so if I want to find the cumulative probabilities, to do so, I'm going to help myself out and make a probability distribution table. So x equals x, I get 1, 2, or 3. The probability that x is equal to x, I already figured out, well, k is 1 twelfth. So that means the probability of this one will be 3 times a twelfth, which is 1 quarter. This is 4 times a twelfth which is going to be one-third. And then this is going to be 5 times a twelfth, which is going to be 5 over 12. So I know this is one-quarter, one-third, and five-twelfths. And actually, I might even keep this in twelfths because I know what's going to be coming up ahead. I know this was three-twelfths, four-twelfths, Okay, and so if I want to do the cumulative, the cumulative, and so the probability that x is less than or equal to x, well, that will, that's the first one. The second one means I want to be probably of x being 2 or 1, or less than or equal to 2. Well, that's going to be 7 over 12. 
and then 3, if I add 7 and 5, I get 12 over 12. But that should be intuitive because this is the last possibility, so it had to equal 1 because it was cumulative. And so this is the cumulative distribution function that they were looking for, the cumulative prob probabilities. Okay, so now the next thing it asks is, C part says, what is the median? Well, the median means the 50% value. Well, I look here, 50% number 12 is 6 out of 12. That's going to be here in number 2 because it's going to be number 2 for 4 to 12, 5 out of 12, 6 out of 12, and 7 out of 12. And so the median is equal to 2. And finally, the last one that we're going to look at is find the probability D part says find the probability that x is bigger than 1. Random variable x is bigger than 1. Well, that's just going to be these values here are the ones that are bigger than 1, which means I'm going to add 4 twelfths and 5 twelfths. So that's going to be 9 twelfths, which is divided by 3, I think, 3 quarters. Another way I could have done that is 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 1, which is 1 minus 3 twelfths, which is again 1 quarter. So there's your introduction to random variables.